Hello, this is Jason Burgos, and this is another edition of the Cheap Seats Chatter Amateur Hour Fight Picks for UFC Fight Night Dos Anjos vs. Cerrone 2. Now, as always, it's going to be just the big main three fights on the card. To keep it to a short and easy listen. Now, the first fight I'm going to cover and do a fight picks for is Nate Diaz versus Michael Johnson. Now, this is a good fight. It should be fun. I'm actually really looking forward to it. Though, I think it's a clear decision to make. And anything can happen in MMA, and it probably will. But the things to keep in mind is that are that Nate Diaz is 1-3 in three in his last four and hasn't four in a year. While Michael Johnson has been relatively active, being 4-1, and one, and that one being a close, controversial loss, the, the things that worry me the most is that when you're off for a year, especially for a guy like Nate Diaz, who is a striker, and also, in, in a way, a one-dimensional striker who focuses mostly on his boxing, it takes you some time to get back into a rhythm. So, that matched with Michael Johnson's ability to move around, he can wrestle, in his nine losses, he's actually been submitted six times, so there is a clear weakness and an avenue for Nate Diaz to go, but Nate Diaz isn't a strong takedown guy, and Michael Jackson is a pretty good wrestler who moves, so I just don't see Nate getting a takedown other than, say, him rocking Michael Johnson and that's how he gets him to the floor, or pulling guard, which Michael Johnson knows what he's doing and he'll probably get right back up to his feet, you would think. So I think on this one, there's a clear choice. I would go with Michael Johnson. Anything can happen, but I'm going to say Michael Johnson by decision just based off the lack of activity by Nate Diaz in the last year of fighting. He's been on a little bit of a losing streak, so you worry if he's maybe in a decline or the division's passing by. Michael Johnson isn't a superstar, and he's close to contender, but not there yet, but he's just a guy on the way up, while Nate Diaz, unfortunately, might be a guy on the way down. Now, for the second fight I will do picks for, it's going to be Alistair Overeem versus Julio Dos Santos, a really fun heavyweight fight that actually was supposed to happen, I believe, in 2012, but due to Alistair Overeem testing positive for PEDs, and then later when the, fa- the fight was remade, he got injured, it never happened. Back then, I would have told you, hands down, no problem, Drew Dos Santos is going to eat that man alive. But some things have changed since then. And not necessarily guys have gotten better or worse, it's just almost age and time has changed what this the outlook I think is going to be on this fight. Alistair Overeem hasn't been tearing the UFC up. He's 4-3 and three in the UFC. He hasn't been spectacular. A lot of people wonder after he wasn't maybe able to use PEDs anymore. He's not the same fighter. But also the same could be said for Junior Dos Santos in a different way though. He's 2-2 two and two in his last four and he's had some hellacious beatings put on him mainly by Cain Velasquez in their second and third fight. And also in this Mark Hunt fight, he, had, he took some serious shots, a really good competitive fight, and also the Stipe Miocic, he really got hurt in that fight and you know showed his toughness and his grip, but there's a lot of wear has been put on the tire for him the last few years, and that's what worries me. Added to that is similar to the Nate Diaz and Michael Johnson pick, he hasn't been active, he hasn't fought in a year, and he hasn't been active in general the last few years just due to injuries. He's only 31, but almost seems like he's older because of injuries and because how he started to slow down a bit from the dominant fight he was a few years ago. I, my head still feels like it should be Drew Dos Santos to win a fight. I just think he's the the better fighter at this level. Not to say anything bad about Alistair. He's a great fighter, kickboxer. Just when he's he doesn't have a heavyweight chin to match, you know, what he needs to take in that division. I mean, even at 205, he's been knocked out and hurt by you know Shogun Hua. So. At heavyweight, he, I just don't know if he has a chin, and while Junior most times does, I don't know if he has that chin anymore. My gut is just telling me something is going to happen unexpected, and I think Alistair is going to win. And I think I can see it being like a third round, maybe submission. I'll go with third round submission just because he has so many submissions, he has that great team. I just have a feeling something late will happen. Junior's chin, which has been diminished and has been so great for so long, will get clipped by a lucky shot. You know, Alistair probably fights safe. Maybe he'll wrestle a little bit, though Junior's very hard to take down anyway. And I just, this one, my gut just tells me something's going to happen unexpected, even though Junior Dos Santos should be the pick. So I'm going to go with Alistair Overing, third round submission. Now, my final pick is for the main event of this card. It's Rafael Dos Anjos versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone. This fight is actually a rematch, and it's guy. Both of them have changed on certain levels, but specifically, Rafael Dos Anjos has grown a lot since their last fight. And it's fun because both of them are really on roles. I mean, both of them are guys who have been in the, bi- the business and the game for a while, and they're not necessarily young guys. They're in their prime. They have the mix of prime and experience, so it's a, it's a fun fight. Dos Anjos is actually 9-1 in his last 10, while Cerrone is on an 8-fight win streak. I mean, both of them are just rolling, and 
it's it's interesting. The, the one of the interesting things, though, they call as they call it MMA math, is you want to look at maybe their common opponents, which it doesn't matter all the time. And one guy can lose to one guy, and another guy can beat him. It's it's weird like that. But the common opponents they do have are Ben Henderson, Nate Diaz, Anthony Pettis, and Evan Dunham. Cerrone has lost all of those fights except for Dunham, while Rofrio dos Anjos has won all those fights. Does that mean he's the better fighter? Maybe. Does it not mean? Maybe not. I don't know. It, it's an interesting thing to look at. You know, and, and the thing that always worries me about Donald Cerrone is that in big fights, now he's been better at it lately, and he's won some big fights, no doubt about it, but in big fights, he does have a penchant to just throw up some stinkers. You know, he could put out a clunker and lay an egg in big fights. He did it with Ben Henderson, their first two fights he lost. You know, Jamie Varner, the two fights they had, it was so so. You know, he lost Nate Diaz, lost Anthony Pettis. He's a big fight, and he had his chance to really take it to the next level and become a champion. And he just, he falls flat. It's almost Kenny florian ish in a way. It's a tough fight. They're both really good fighters. I'm just, I'm going to go with Dos Anjos. I'm going to go decision because he usually gets decision more times in his fights. The thing that's uh, an interesting thing to watch out for is... Donald Cerrone has fantastic Muay Thai kicks. Now, Dos Anjos' movement has been a lot better since he's been with Rafael Cordero in that camp. He moves around a lot, he throws combos. If Cerrone can get kicks and slow down those legs, that'd be interesting. If it goes into a, a in the pocket, in the phone booth kind of brawl, standing in front of each other, Donald Cerrone has a good chance. I mean, without a doubt, because he's a dangerous fighter and has, you know, a style that he can mix things up just as good as, as Dos Anjos did can. But Dos Anjos proved a lot to me with Anthony Pettis, because Anthony Pettis is a killer of a striker. He stood there with them, bested him on the striking, moved around, had a fantastic game plan, and the Donald Cerrone is, he is what he is. He's been the same guy for the most part for the last 10 years, while Dos Anjos has grown and changed from a jiu-jitsu guy to a well-rounded fighter. And the, Donald Cerrone has always had a thing where he doesn't move his head enough for me, just for my liking. Doesn't mean he's not a good striker, not a good fighter, he just doesn't move his head enough. His shoulders and head almost seem stationary at times, and it worries me the better the striker gets. And that's kind of what happened with Nate Diaz. He got a little too gutsy, and he doesn't move his head enough, and Nate Diaz had a better chin, and he won that fight. So I, I, I just think those Sainz will have a better game plan. He'll move around, he'll work everything, he'll throw combos, he'll land some shots. I wouldn't be surprised if either guy got hurt in this fight because both of them are dangerous, but I'm going to go with Dos Anjos, five-round decision, and he's going to retain his title. That was my fight picks for UFC Fight Night, Dos Anjos versus Cerrone 2. Hope you guys enjoy. If you agree or don't, comment away and let me know. See you later.